Hi everyone, John Cottrell here of Embody Yoga. This is Soft Flow Yoga. It's a 60 minute gentle yoga practice. Thank you so much for being here. So our practice today is called Let's Balance. So when we balance, we're going to be doing some working on balancing on one foot, but because we're balancing that also involves, of course, our legs. So we'll be doing some hamstring work, but also some core work just to find that stability, that strength we come, that comes from our center body that helps us with some balancing poses. So for our props today, we will be using a strap or something long like a belt or a jump rope. That's going to help us get some nice long legs. We'll be doing some hamstring stretching. And so just having the assistance of a yoga strap is very nice. I'm of course sitting on my nice soft blanket here that I have folded so maybe you want to grab a blanket or something soft that you can sit on and kneel on. That could also be a towel that you fold up. If you don't have either of those you might even just fold your mat. We like to use a couple of yoga blocks. A couple of yoga blocks here very nice to use and very helpful for our practice and I always like to have my yoga bolster handy just in case I need something soft to sit on or it also assists in my shavasana practice when I'm lying down. Not going to be using it formally in our practice but always just nice to have. And you can see I have my chair right here because we're going to be doing some balancing I'm going to use the chair but also going to use a wall just to help with again some stability to help with the balance. So if you have something near you like a wall, table, chair, anything like that go ahead and stand right next to it when we get to our balancing uh, segments of the practice. I'm going to move my chair out of screen here. Let's go ahead and begin. So let's start in seated. So find a comfortable seat that might be on your folded blanket or towel or a nice soft pillow or cushion. Take a couple of deep breaths. You might breathe in deeply through your nose and exhale completely through your nose or out through your mouth. Might even feel your shoulders relax, that's always a good thing. Inhale, fill yourself up, nice full breath in, and exhale completely, letting it all out. And just continue with slow, steady breaths. Those first two breaths are just an invitation to breathing, just that awareness that you are breathing. And knowing that it's the breath that's the foundation of our practice, which really brings us in the moment helping you to be more aware and connected. So let's keep this connection and deepen this connection. Slow, steady breaths. For this part, you're welcome to keep your eyes opened. You might just gaze forward or downward. You can also close your eyes and just gaze inward. Breathe in a way where you can feel your breath. Notice how your body is responding to your breath and breathe so that you can hear your breath. And if not, just turn up the volume a little bit so you can hear it. Just holding here in stillness and silence for a moment. Just bringing your bo body and mind to this moment, feeling fully present. As you breathe in, Perhaps feeling the breath rising upward to fill your lungs. A nice expansive feeling across the chest. Then as you exhale, letting go of the breath, draw your navel in towards your spine so you can feel that connection to your center body. It's a light contraction of your abdominal muscles. Again, as you inhale, feel the lengthening of your spine. Sit up a little taller as you're able and feel your lungs expand. Exhale, connect to your center keeping that nice core connection. Just continue this for a few more breaths. The awareness and feeling of breath and bringing a little bit more dynamics to the breath with that sensation. This is our breathing meditation as we set ourselves up. In a moment we'll add some very simple movement which will be our moving meditation. Take two more breaths. And 
and then join me for some very simple movements. Just going to be our arms. As you inhale, extend your arms out across the room. Reach as if you're going to touch the walls on either side of you. Then all the way up as if you're going to touch the ceiling until you have completed your in-breath. Then exhale. Don't forget to draw your belly in for that secure feeling. And extend your arms out and let them float right back down to your side, completing that first round of breath. Let's do that again. And inhale to sweep the arms out and all the way up, reaching even. Feel that lengthening and stretch quality in the body. Exhale, reach. Good energy in the fingertips all the way through and back down. And now continue this movement and your breath at your own pace. So you don't have to move exactly how I'm moving or at my pace. You can keep your eyes closed and just move at your pace. If you happen to be moving in slow motion, just notice the sensations that are arising in your body. Maybe the lengthening through your arms or the sides of your body. Energy in your hands and fingers. When you exhale, pull belly in. Feel that connection to your center body. Feel your shoulders in motion here. Feel your breath. Go ahead and finish the breath that you're on and take two more breaths. Again, just taking your time. Certainly no rush. Taking our time in our soft flow practice. When you're complete, just let your arms rest down by your side. Your hands can rest in your lap. And just notice that transition from active movement to just being in stillness and how the body, especially your shoulders perhaps, just relax. While still seated, bring your hands behind you, perhaps just propped up onto your fingertips just to make your arms a little bit longer. And with the arms behind you, also draw the shoulders back. It, it takes some muscle engagement in your upper back to pull them back and hold them back. So be aware of that sensation. And then just tip your chin up just a little bit, not too far where you feel a strain in the neck. You also wanna be able to still breathe fully. Now with some effort, you'll inhale, press into the ground with the fingertips, feel that energy move right up the arms and shoulders. And of course, that nice expansive breath in, filling up your lungs. Then as you exhale, continue to draw your belly in, feel the abdominal muscles contract, and maybe even squeeze your shoulder blades together behind you, more activation of your upper back body. Again, a breath in, pressing into the ground, energy in the arms and shoulders, fill up your lungs. Exhale, pull belly in, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Feel the energy in the body. There's several poses like this in yoga that even though you might be in stillness and it seems to be a relatively easy pose to do, there is an energetic feel. One more breath in and out. And when you're complete, just lower your chin, Walk your hands toward yourself to sit up tall. You can even bring your hands back into your lap. And again, feel that transition from active movement to being in stillness. So that was just a, a simple back bend, a seated back bend, just to open up the heart space. Now let's take a forward fold. We're going to reposition our legs and feet. You're going to press the soles of the feet together. Now, as far as where they are, on the mat, you can draw them in close to the body, but if that's too much tension on the bent knees here, you can always slide the feet forward, taking some of that tension away from the knees. And even use the blocks or books or pillows, whatever you happen to use for your props here, maybe tuck them underneath the legs so your legs rest open rather than feel like they're falling open. Then hold on to your ankles or shins, sitting up as tall as you can, breathing in to feel the length of the torso. Exhale, pull belly in and start to hinge forward a little bit, just a little bit, leading with your heart and chin, just a nice angled upper body. Hold, breathe in, feel like the, your torso is growing tall or lifting up 
Exhale, draw belly in. That's really to support the body now in motion as we hinge forward a little bit more, not much. Now you don't have to go very far for this to experience the benefits of the pose. You might start to feel a little stretch, lengthening sensation in the inner legs. Doesn't have to be too dynamic, just have an awareness, even if it's kind of just subtle, because it's still working. You don't have to force or push yourself to a full 100% when we get into some of these postures. Instead, in soft flow, we like to dial it back quite a bit to maybe 60 to 70%, depending on the pose. Now, I'm really dialed back. I'm, I'm about a 50% at this pose. I want to dial it up just a little bit. I'm just going to hinge forward a little bit more, even drop my chin a little and let my back round. And I just went a little bit more. Now I feel like I'm more at that 60%, just a little bit above that 60%. I have sensation in my inner legs. And because my chin is tipped downward, it creates a curvature in the spine. So I do feel this in my back. It all feels good. I feel like I could hold this for a quite a long time. Let's take three more breaths in this position. When you're ready to move, if the back is rounded, to re-extend the spine, just lift your chin a little bit. That'll help that lengthening. Hinge yourself back up for a little assist. You might place your hands on the mat and just press just to guide your way back up into your nice and tall in your seat. Take a breath. If you're using those props underneath the legs, we can set those to the side, keep them handy. And then carefully come to hands and knees. This is where you might want to use that padding, either a blanket or towel, or just simply fold your mat underneath your uh, hands and knees. So we'll start here. Let's get my blanket all nicely unfolded there. There we go. So on hands and knees, like so. Cat pose and cow pose. It's a movement of two postures flowing through the two postures. So we're gonna inhale and lift the head and heart looking forward, dropping the belly, letting the pelvis tip back, which creates a bit of a back bend. This is an in-breath and it's cow pose. On the exhale, tuck the tailbone under, feel the belly button pull up towards spine. It's another core engagement. Notice how your back rounds and your chin tucks in towards your chest. I'm going very slowly here, but of course you can go at your own pace. Tipping the pelvis back, let the belly drop, heart open, slightly look forward. Exhale, round it all out. Feeling this nice mobility throughout the spine and pelvis. Make sure the breath is guiding you through these two postures. Now go ahead and take two more breaths, finishing this part of our sequence, and of course, always going at your own pace. When you're complete, just come to a neutral tabletop position, keeping the neck long and neutral as well, and your gaze might be downward between the hands on your mat. And then if you happen to be using a pad, let's crawl off the pad or unfold your mat so it's flat again and come back to hands and knees now if your hands and wrists are directly underneath your shoulders let's step the hands forward a little bit or way out in front here spreading out your fingers to feel that nice stretch between each finger press into the mat to flatten and open your palms so it's a nice stretch for the hands as you press you'll feel energy in the arms they should be straight and strong tuck your toes under take another cat cow flow you'll inhale tip Chin up, arch the back. There's our back bend, cow. Exhale, round it out into cat pose. Pulling belly button up towards spine. Hold this position long enough so you can lift your knees off of your mat, sending your hips up into the air. Now you might need to adjust your feet, maybe a slight tiptoe forward, not much, even taking the feet a little wider. Just have a, a nice strong base. You can even adjust your hands, which I'm doing now. I'm taking my hands out a little wider. Keep a good bend in the knees as if you're going to kneel down to touch the floor, but not that low. And that should allow some good mobility in your hips, lifting the hips high into the sky.
pressing palms into the floor with some extra pet pressure towards your thumbs and index fingers. And then lastly, make sure your head feels loose. I have a tendency to hold my head stiff and uh, in this posture. So loosen up the neck by nodding yes a few times, even shake your head no. Now we're going to walk forward until your feet are about center on the mat, just as long as your feet are flat on the mat. You might need to slide your fingers toward your toes. You'll be in a forward fold for a moment. Inhale, slide your hands up to your shins or knees. We'll hold here on the exhale. Now keep a good bend in the knees. You're going to feel this automatic activation through the hamstrings and lower glutes. The torso is parallel to the floor. You, you'll also have an automatic engagement of your core, okay, your abdominal system to help hold you in this posture. Your hands are just kind of resting lightly on the shins. We're already doing leg work since you have that activation of the hamstrings. We'll do a little bit more uh, leg work to help us with some balance a little bit later. Now, shift your weight back into your heels, bend your knees, feel like you're about to sit down into a low chair, lifting the chest a bit. Swing your arms out to the side, then stand up tall by driving your heels into the floor, reaching up into the air to finish that nice straight line in the body. Big stretch there at the top. Exhale, bring your arms down to your side. And that should complete that series. Feel free to roll the shoulders here. Since we were on our hands for a little bit in that downward facing dog, you might want to just massage the wrists there, wrink, wiggle the fingers. I like to even get into the elbows. So a little movement in the joint, shoulders, elbows, and wrists. You can even work down the body, work your hips, check in with your knees and your ankles. Good, let's do another forward fold slowly and carefully and make our way back up. That's a half salute to the sun, starting in mountain pose. Inhale, sweep your arms out and up, nice extension through the body. Exhale, spread your wings, bend your knees and sit back and down to an imaginary chair, all the way down slowly and carefully. Now you might touch your toes or your hands might land near your shins or ankles. Again, slide your hands up to the shins or knees and extend your spine they only lifting up halfway. This is actually called half forward fold. Again, there's the engagement of hamstrings and core. Feel also the extension of the torso. Feel like your hips and tailbone are moving to the wall behind you or well, the very top of your head or crown is moving forward. Now, shifting weight back into the heels, bend your knees, lift your chest, spread your wings and float your way back up until you're nice and tall, reaching up and beyond the ceiling. Exhale, arms return to your side. Very good. Check in with those joints if you'd like to. Shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, <laughs> and your ankles. Even your toes. <laughs> Very good. Alrighty. Let's do our half, no, we're going to do our warrior one uh, sequence here. So our variation of Warrior One to get us ready for our kind of our fuller version of Warrior One. So starting in Mountain Pose. Let's start with the softness in the knees, making sure we haven't locked out the knees, soft knees. And then start shifting your weight into your right foot. Root down into the floor, strong active leg. Feel tall up top with an inhale. Fill yourself up with breath. Exhale, connect to your center. That's really getting our body ready for our movement, engaging the core. It's also gonna help us with balance later. I'm leaning forward just a little bit. I can even feel my right foot, those toes are gripping the mat. With that sensation, I'm just tapping this left foot back a little bit. Heel is lifted, toes active there. I'm shifting the weight back as I pivot that left heel, turn it and place the foot flat on the mat. You should be centered here. Place your hands on your hips, push your pelvis downward, at the same time feel your torso lift upward like so. Making some space in the belt line, turning mostly forward. There's a slight bend in this right knee. Leg, left leg, this back leg is mostly straight, but is, we're still keeping a softness in the knee. Inhale, let's take the arm straight up. Exhale, bend elbows to about 90 degrees. Now, as mentioned, this is our variation of Warrior One. It's a lunge, but of course, there isn't too much distance between the feet. Instead of having the arms straight up into the air, they're bent here at 90 degrees. Okay, inhale, ex extend the arms straight up. Exhale, bring your arms down. Bring your hands to your hips. 
lean forward so you're putting weight into this front foot so you can pick up that back foot step forward feet together balanced on two feet let's realign the body by reaching both arms up into the air inhale as you do so and exhale arms return to your side let's do the other side soft knees Shifting weight into your left foot, press strongly into the ground, feel that whole leg energize. At the same time, feel tall, inhale, fill up your lungs. Here comes that core engagement, exhaling, draw belly in, ready for movement. Shift forward, grip the mat with your left set of toes, so you can tap this right foot back, right heel lifted, toes flexed. So I didn't have to step back far, it's just until the leg just stops, it doesn't go any further. Pivot that right leg, and heel down to the floor like that. Balanced, there's our center. Place hands on hips, push pelvis down as the torso lengthens, giving you space in your midline. Cross the belly there, cross the waistline so you're facing forward. Make sure that left knee is bent, back leg mostly straight. Inhale, reaching both arms up, straight line. Exhale, bend elbows to about 90 degrees, and we'll hold here for a couple breaths. Make sure you still feel balanced and I like to say balanced on two feet. Centered, now these are just some key words and feelings you want to have here as we prepare for balance on one foot. So here, feeling balanced on two feet. Inhale, extend the arms straight up. Exhale, bring the arms back down, hands to hips. Lean forward, again, putting weight into this front foot. Let's step forward, feet together. Balanced on two feet, there I go again, same expression. Inhale, let's take both arms all the way up for a nice stretch, realigning and lengthening of the body. Arms return to your side, exhaling to do so. Shake it all out. Very good. All right, let's get into our first flow here, moving into our second version of Warrior One, and then we'll really start getting into our legs and practice with some balancing. Mountain Pose to begin our sequence. Sun Salute Series A. Inhale, extend arms up. Exhale, spread your wings, bend your knees, sit back into the imaginary chair. There is a weight shift back into the hips and heels as you slowly fold. So this takes balance as you fold. Hands can land at your shins or ankles or maybe your toes. Inhale, slide your hands back up the legs, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana or half forward fold. But we are going to fold all the way down. Bend the knees more, getting low. Release your head and neck. Low enough until you can place your hands on your mat and just start walking both feet back to the back end of your mat. And then create a straight line as you're able from heel to head. Dropping the hips a little bit, not too far. So we're in plank pose. Breathe in. Exhale, bend your knees a bit, send your hips up into the air. That's our transition to downward facing dog. Again, make your adjustments with your feet, your hands. Be sure you spread out your fingers. Press palms firmly into the mat. As you press into the ground, feel the energy in your arms, straight arms. Feel the hips lift up into the air, lengthening through the torso as best as we can. And don't forget to shake out the a possibly stiff neck. Now, inhale and pick up your right foot and extend the right leg back behind you. Reach. Now, this is kind of the start of a balancing pose, as, is, as if you're standing on one foot. But, of course, we're inverted and we have the hands on the floor. Breathe in. When you exhale, bend your right knee, bring the knee in underneath you toward your chest or chin. As you're doing that, shift your whole upper body forward so your shoulders are over your wrists and set the right foot down. It's just your toes, heel lifted. But then set the left knee down onto the mat. So we're something like this. Pull the weight back so you have less weight in the right hand. Use that right hand to go get your right foot. Pick it up, place it up a little higher on your mat so it's closer to where your right hand is. Relift the left knee, so I call this a runner's lunge. But we're gonna pivot or turn that left heel to the floor, flat on the mat. Step the hands back, maybe towards the center of the mat, as your body weight shifts back, so there's more pressure and engagement of the left foot into the ground. Here I like to rise up to fingertips to help lift the upper body to extend the upper body. Okay, we're setting up ourselves for our Warrior One second variation, so there's more distance between the feet. 
We have a lengthened spine. With an inhale, we're rising up, taking the arms all the way up, straight up into the air. Exhale just to settle into the lunge position. Hold here for a moment. So in a way, more leg work, okay? Even though we're not balanced on one foot, we're still balanced on two feet. And the balance is because there's an even distribution of weight from foot to foot. My center is here, right along the torso. Now, breathe in. Exhale, turn your torso now towards the left side of the room as your arms come down to parallel. We're, now we're in warrior two. Check in with your right knee. Sometimes it likes to dip to the inside here. You want to make sure the knee is pointing mostly forward. It's a line. Go ahead and look at it. Your knee is right over your heel or ankle. There's even a sensation of the outer knee or outer thigh moving to the right side of the room. Let's take side angle. Reach forward a little bit, angled upper body, rotate the arms. You don't have to go very far. You can see my hand, my forearm is really resting on the inner right leg. You could go lower, but really not necessary since we're doing a uh, soft flow practice. Remember, 60 to 70% of the work, all righty? Not that means not to say that you're not that you're doing less work because <laughs> you're really doing some really dynamic work here. Two more breaths. Good. Now I like to come back up to a warrior two. Let's drop the left hand, send that left hand forward, face forward like so, and then fold. Hands out front, bring the hands to the floor, rise up onto tiptoes behind you to return to that runner's lunge. Press hands into the mat strongly, so we can slide that right foot back and we'll be in plank pose again. Pause for a moment, then bend your knees like you're about to kneel, send your hips up into the air. Downward facing dog. Make some adjustments, settle in, loosen your neck. Other side, inhale, extend left leg up into the air, hold on the exhale, but keep breathing so you can experience this nice lengthening quality through the body. The sensation of standing on one foot, even though we still have the hands on the floor. Breathe in, exhale, bend the left knee, bring it in underneath you towards your chest as you shift forward, shoulders over the wrists, set the left foot down, at least the toes, heel lifted, set the right knee down. Take the weight off that left hand so we can go get that left foot, pick it up and place it up a little higher on the mat. Once in place, relift that right knee, pivot the right heel to the floor, step the hands back. It's really just towards the center of the mat so you can put more weight and pressure in that back foot. Rise to fingertips so you actually lift a little, helping you to extend the torso as best as you can. Then an inhale perhaps to rise up, reach up into the air, exhale, lunge. Hold, reaching straight up, feel the strength and energy in the lower portion of the body, through the legs in this lunge, finding that balance. Breathe in. Exhale, it's open to the right side of the room as your arms come down to parallel. Being sure the left knee is still pointing forward, knee nicely aligned over the heel or ankle, outer left thigh or knee moving towards the left side of the room. Side angle modified, just reaching forward a little bit to angle the upper half of the body. Rotate the arms reaching high and low. You certainly can go lower. Maybe your hand does reach the floor or maybe a stack of books or blocks. Remember, are you working at 60 to 70%? If you feel like you're straining or pushing yourself beyond your limits today, okay, that might be for a different style of practice. Today, this is about movement, awareness of the movement, modifying, being gentle and kind to your own body. Breathe in, exhale, come back up to warrior two. Let's drop the right arm, send it forward so we're facing forward with both arms reaching forward. Fold and bend, hands out front so you can land on the hands. Rise up onto tiptoes behind you, runner's lunge. Push hands into the floor, feel the energy in the arms. You might not see this, but you do want to lift the hips so that takes some of the pressure off the left foot so you can slide it back. Plank pose, hold. 
and then we'll bring the knees to the floor. We'll sit back briefly in hero just to get off the hands. Sit off to the side. Swing the legs around to the front. Sit in the center of your mat. Be sure you've got your blocks handy. We're getting ready for our bridge pose. Carefully roll down onto your back. Go ahead and bring the legs in with you. A little bend of the knees, a nice hug. Just hold on to your knees or shins. And please feel free to add some movement here. I like to create circles and figure eights. For me, it feels good in my hips and my low back. My low back likes to get a little stiff on me on occasion, so some gentle massaging is nice. Even get in the feet, circle the ankles, one direction and the other direction. Remember, we've already done some standing, okay? We're going to be doing more standing on one foot, so just making sure the ankles feel limber and strong. Before we get into our bridge, take a moment and extend both legs up into the air. Don't worry about straightening the legs. It's okay to have the knees bent as needed. Just hold on to the legs. A light flex of the feet so your heels feel like they're reaching up towards the ceiling. We're not going to hold here long. It's just an idea and an invitation to the legs as they extend. Now bend the knees a lot so you can bring your feet down to the floor. All right, with your good, well, grab your blocks with your next exhale, press feet into the ground so you can lift your hips high enough to slide your props, your books or blocks underneath you. And then just take a seat and just hold here. Make some adjustments with the upper body, your lower body, and just rest here really, because there's a, not a whole lot of engagement in the body, especially when you're sitting on the books or blocks. Now, if you want, just for a little trial, maybe you want to lift your hips, remove the blocks, and keep your body lifted. You'll feel the difference, how much more engaged the body is with that sensation. Now, I do that in other classes, but for soft flow, we're just keeping that mildness and sensitivity, as well as the gentle uh, modifications, variations of some poses. Now press feet into the floor, lifting the hips high enough to remove the blocks, slowly and carefully coming back down to the ground. Let's extend the body, extend the legs out front. If you have room behind you, reach the arms behind you for a nice lengthening. Maybe a breath or two like this. Now we're going to get prepared for a version of boat pose. Okay, boat pose is a great posture to engage our core. Core stability is what we want in our balancing positions. So you might bend your knees again. What you may want to do here, if, you, if you'd like, you can hug the knees into your body, kind of roll up into a ball and rock your way up to seated. Or what I like to do usually is roll to one side and then use my hands and help press myself up. So you can really take your time with that. Once you're in your seat, you're going to keep the knees bent, heels on the floor, feet flex. So an active feet, hold on underneath the bent knees here and literally sit straight up like you have a wall behind you. So straight up. Inhale, breath rising, fill up the lungs. Exhale, pull belly in. So we're already activating core. We're already in boat pose. It's just a variation. We're going to add a little bit more dynamics to us to it by just leaning back a little bit. You might also want to lift the chin just slightly so that your neck or your head and neck are still in the same alignment as your torso. Now you can see I'm not leaning back far, but I can still feel the core engagement. And you're, and you're also helping your body by holding on. Now you can certainly lean back a tiny bit more or even release the legs and free up your hands. Remember, stay in that 60 to 70% mark. I'm closer to 70 here because I can really feel that my body working and I probably can't hold here a whole uh, or a long time. But if I hold on and lift myself up, kind of dialing back the intensity, I can still work and hold the posture longer and I might even get more benefit from it. So that's kind of the idea sometimes. All right, so that's our core work. Go ahead and soften the body. Now, we're going to straighten the legs, so you might want to scoop back or just extend the legs so we can get into our hamstrings. All right, so we're just getting so ourselves set up for balance. We haven't even gotten to the full balancing on one foot yet. 
you know, we're finding strength in the legs, we're finding, finding balance on two feet, okay, we're engaging the core, stretching the legs. Okay, so we're setting things up, and that's what I like to typically do in soft flow and some of my power yoga classes. So feel free to take one of my power classes too. Alrighty. So I took the strap and I wrapped it around both feet, and I just kind of looped them around my hands. I'm going to pull the straps gently to inhale to get nice and tall, forming a nice 90 degree angle with the body, an L shape. Inhale, feel that length, feel tall. Exhale. Pull belly in and a light tug of the strap to hinge forward. Now, I'm already at 70%. I feel this. Now, it doesn't seem like I went very far, and I didn't, but my back is still straight and my legs are still straight. But I can feel the leg stretching. Now, if you need to, you can soften this up so it doesn't feel so intense. If it is intense, you can bend the knees a little or a lot, even let the back round. So softening up a little bit, Ah, easing up so you don't feel as stiff perhaps so you can hold the posture a little longer breathe a little deeper and even allow the legs to remain in this nice stretch or lengthening quality for a little bit longer and hopefully in the, the intention too is not to feel like you're trying to overstretch there's no benefit of overstretching alrighty if you do it in small light increments the body is more likely to respond rather than react okay react is like that strength that stressful tensing of the body and that doesn't lead to good things usually just more stress more anxiety Soften it up, ease into it, relax. Then your body says, oh, this feels good. I like this. And it is going to then open up to you. That's more of a nice response. All righty, two more breaths. And just rising back up. And we'll go ahead and release. Now, we did hold that for a long time, but not extremely long, okay? But that gives you the idea of lengthening and opening up through the legs, in particular targeting the hamstrings, the backs of the legs here, but not overstretching or going too far too fast. Over time, the more that you do something like this, the body is going to respond and you'll gain a little bit more flexibility. All right, let's bend the knees, bring the soles of the feet together. Once again here, maybe just holding onto the ankles. You might just take a gentle forward fold. We're not going to be here long. It's really just taking that stretch out of the legs for a moment and a couple breaths as we get ready for our next pose. I think we're getting ready to do some balancing. All right, rising back up. We're going to make our way back to hands and knees. I'm just swinging the feet back behind here. Find your tabletop position. Let's get that spinal movement by moving through cat and cow again. Inhale, lift head and heart, arching the back. Exhale, round it out. And do that a couple more times. So it's an undulation through the spine. That rocking sensation of the pelvis. And then when you're complete, maybe two or three breaths, pause here in stillness in your tabletop posture. Let's return to a downward facing dog. First, stepping the hands forward, spread out your fingers. Same thing as we did before. Press firmly into the mat with the hands, strong straight arms, tuck your toes. With an exhale, lifting the knees, send your hips into the air, downward facing dog. Adjust the feet and hands, soft knees, relaxed head and neck. As before, we're just going to step both feet to the center of the mat, take as many steps as you need to, and then slide your fingers toward your toes. Now we've got a, another standing forward fold. We'll hold a bit longer so you can continue that nice lengthening sensation in the hamstrings, mimicking what we just did, the seated forward fold. 
Weight shift now into the heels. Bend your knees, lower your hips like you're sitting in into a, sitting into a chair. Lifting the torso. I'm just kind of rising up to fingertips. Hold here. Now to help you stand all the way, either spread your wings or bring hands to your thighs, which I like to do. Push into the mid-thigh area. Press, lift, stand until you're very tall. We'll keep that line going by reaching both arms up into the air. There it is. And then bring your arms down to your side. <sighs> Made our way back to standing. All right, just stand for a moment in stillness. Again, that return to standing or balancing on two feet. Now we're getting ready to balance on one foot. We're gonna do several balancing postures. One is tree pose. I really like doing tree pose because if I'm gonna, gonna be teaching any kind of balance um, uh, practice, any kind of balancing posture, I always start with tree pose. I'm gonna bring in my chair. So maybe you'll want to stand near a wall, table, chair, whatever you've got for a little extra stability. I'm just gonna bring it in. I just folded my mat so it's out of the way just like this. So I'm going to try to mirror you. This is my right hand, but I'm going to say left. Okay. So let's say this is your left hand on the wall or table or the top of a chair like that. Balanced on two feet. So make sure you have that sensation. Even look down at your feet so you have that awareness. And again, put some softness into the knees. Now we're going to shift the weight towards the wall, towards whatever you're standing next to. So left foot, left hand. Root into the floor with that left foot. Now get tall. Inhale, lift. Exhale, pull belly in. Think of boat pose, that nice engagement here. Okay, we need the strong standing leg, strong core. Then we can work our way into the balance. So I'm picking up the right foot, bending the knees. So then rather than having this foot loose, okay, you can see my leg goes loose. If the foot is loose, the leg is more likely to be loose. Flex the foot. It just energizes the leg. And maybe as you're able, getting the thigh so it's parallel to the floor. If you need to hold on to the knee with the hand, that's perfect. Okay, so we got a hand on the chair or table holding on to the right knee. We're just going to swing it out to the side a little bit. It's pointing at an angle. You probably can't tell in this video, but it's pointing out at an angle. That's fine. Maybe you can get it all the way to the side, but really not necessary. Now, can you feel that standing leg? It's probably really working hard for you because since we're standing here a long time. Let's go ahead and place this foot on the inside of the standing leg. Let's take it down a little bit. Below the knee is optimal right here. Okay, so this is our tree pose. You can keep the left hand on the wall or whatever you're using for stability. The free right hand can reach up into the air. There we are. We want to get long and tall. Reach up like you're going to touch the ceiling rooting down into the earth with the left foot. Something to be mindful of because I found myself doing it. It was subtle, but I felt it. Because even though I've got stability, I'm holding on to something. Be careful. I'm going to exaggerate this. Be careful of sinking into the hip. Can you see that how I just dropped into the hip? That will help you balance, but it's taking, you just took the core right out of it. All righty. And you really just settled all that weight into the hip. As you're able, lift up out of that hip. Okay, that takes a little bit more core work. Lifting and lengthening through the torso. Breathing in, growing tall. Exhale, pull belly in. That's helping with the strength of the balance. This is, now we've been here a long time. Let's go ahead and bring this right arm down. Okay, even guide the right knee so it's pointing forward. And just step down. Let's come back to balance on two feet. Since we're standing on that right leg, it's probably a little tired. So you might just step a little wider and maybe just give that leg a little shake. That's all. Just shake all that energy out. Good. Now, we did that on purpose, meaning we held that pose a long time. So a good idea to use something to help you balance, okay? A wall, table, or chair. So you can really allow the body to do its workings to help you find that stabilization. Okay, I'm going to keep this just as it is. I'm just going to step over here. So I've got my wall, my door. Okay, you can even turn around or move your chair if you want to, whatever you want to do. So right side. Okay, hand on the wall or door. Soft knees, put weight into the right foot. Now it's going to be the active standing leg. Remember not to drop into the hip, especially when we're balancing on one foot. 
Nice and tall here. Inhale to get tall. Exhale, draw belly in. Picking up the left foot, flex it. Knee lifting, maybe parallel to the floor at the moment. Mine is lower than parallel. Maybe grab hold of just kind of the front of the knee so I can guide that knee outward, maybe at an angle or out to the side. To the angle, just fine. Placing foot on the inside of the standing leg. Below the knee is optimal. Right there. This feels good. Actually, it feels great. Again, I, I noticed how I just sank into the hip because I've got this door. And so it's just easy to kind of sink. So let's reactivate if that was you as well. Lifting up. There's the energy. Lifting. Long spine. Exhale. Core in. There's our activation. Let's get this left arm straight up into the air to help with that lengthening sensation. Holding, breathing. So we're letting all these, all these little microfibers really in the body really working, especially in the core, core center through here and actually down through that standing leg, down to the foot. So they get used to being in a position like this. And we're holding it longer than usual. So you can feel the body working. So that's why sometimes, even though we're modifying the poses, doesn't mean that it's necessarily easier, especially in soft flow. Let's go ahead and bring that left arm down. You can catch the knee, swing it forward, placing the foot back down onto the mat to rebalance on two feet, just pulling away from the wall. I'm just going to take a little wider stance so I can kind of shake out that standing leg. Ah, all righty. Now I said we're going to do two balancing poses. So we're going to take, we're going to use a strap and let me just quickly show you. Okay, I'm not going to use my strap just yet, but we're going to kind of like set up like we did tree, but we're going to take the leg. Actually, we're going to start forward and just kick and extend the leg forward and slightly out to the side. Okay, that's going to be our second balance. So you can use that table or chair again, but we'll need our strap this time or whatever long uh, rope, like a belt or a jump rope that you might have. Okay, I'm placing the strap underneath right foot and just hold on to it in right hand. Left hand is on whatever balancing aid that you have. Soft knees, put weight into left foot root. Don't collapse into the hip. Nice and tall, inhale, lift. Keep that uplifting sensation. That's why we do the abdominal lock. That's what it's called. Draw the belly in, engage. We're gonna pick up this right foot like a marionette puppet with the strap right there and extend the leg just by pushing through the heel. Okay, can you see my foot? Toes, for the most part, are pointing straight up. Alrighty? Now we need to do what's called an outer rotation. I'm just going to turn the foot outward. That's what's going to help us take the leg out to the side. Alrighty? And kind of be out to the side and lift it, but also stay nice and tall up top. I'm going to show you something different. You might, you can even play with this. If you turn your foot in, it changes the shape of the pelvis. And if we took the leg out to the side, you're going to find that your hip kind of pushes back. You probably can't see me do this, but if you try it, you'll feel the difference. It's, we need to take the leg rolling out the other way outward to get the pelvis to tuck underneath. That's going to help you to stay up nice and tall. All right, that's a long time here. So let's come back to center, bend the knee, maybe a little lift replace the foot. We can remove the strap. That standing leg needs a break. Give it some love. He'll rub the hip, <laughs> shake it out. Alrighty. So remember that little tip. Keep the foot turned out. It's not just the foot, it's actually the whole leg. Okay, that's turning outward. Okay, to help you with balancing with the leg lifted and out to the side. Let's do the other side now. Okay, so the left foot's in the strap, using the door on this side, feeling tall, soft knees, put weight into the right foot without collapsing into the hip. Instead, grow taller through the spine, feel that uplifting sensation, fill up the lungs, exhale, pull belly in for the abdominal engagement or the abdominal lock. Now we'll pick up the left foot, marionette puppet lift. Extend the leg forward, pushing through the heel, just like that. Outward rotation. 
the foot and toes are the guide, okay? So you can see that it is an outer spiral, but it's initiating from the hip where I'm kind of hitting with my hand. Then slowly take the leg out. It doesn't have to lift high. We're not going for height. We're going for extension. The height comes with an extended torso. Make sure you're still up tall. Does it feel like your pelvis is still kind of tucked underneath you rather than maybe shifting back? All righty, let's come back to center. Okay, keep that leg and foot neutral again. Lower the foot to the floor. We're done with the strap, so release it. Step out wide. Shake out that standing leg, a little rub of the hip. Good work. So that's our balancing work. And just some little tips there on what you can do to help with the balance. And it's perfectly fine to use prop straps and walls and chairs to help you experience uh, what it feels like to be in a balance and, 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 and what's working for you. Okay, I'm going to move these props out of the way. Unfold my mat. Let's just do a flow making our way back down into our floor work as we come to the conclusion of our practice. I'm going to do a quick adjustment of my mat as well. There we go. Meet me here in mountain pose. Maybe just a couple of deep breaths. Sometimes I like to imagine like this was the very start of the practice, but now we feel a bit more strong. Maybe the muscles are warmer. We feel a little looser. Now we're really ready to move. Soft knees. Inhale, extend your arms straight up. Exhale, spread your wings. Sit back slowly and gently. Weight shift into the hips and heels. Make your way down. You might be able to touch your toes, but you never need to. Maybe your hands still land at your ankles or shins. As you're able, relax your head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale, slide your hands up to your shins or knees and extend your spine. Flat back. Exhale, we're folding. Bend the knees a whole lot more. Get as low as you can so you can place your hands on your mat. Walk both feet back. Take your time until they're at the back end of the mat. Draw that straight line as best as you can in the body. Plank pose. A very wonderful strength position. Breathe in. Exhale, bend your knees a bit. Send your hips up into the air. Adjust the feet and hands. Let's hold for several breaths in downward facing dog. Good bend in the knees, lift the hips, press hands into the floor, loosen the head and neck. One more thing for your legs. Sometimes when we're in down dog, you can do a little pedaling of the feet. Press one heel down as the other heel lifts. Do this in slow motion so you can feel a little stretch in the calves. Also it affects the toes, even the soles of your feet. So whenever you're in down dog, you can always do this. Alrighty, let's go ahead and gently bring the knees to the floor. Sit back briefly in hero. This is hero pose, but off to the side we go. So we can swing the legs around to the front. Sit in the center of the mat. Go ahead and roll down onto your back. Actually, grab your strap, have that. We're gonna do one more little leg stretch. Okay, lie down, bring your knees into chest. As we did earlier, maybe a little massage for the low back because your pelvis, your hips, your back, they were all affected in those balancing poses. So let's give them a little love. Circle the feet. Same thing as we did earlier. We did a nice setup to warm them up. You can consider this the cool down. Set the left foot down onto the floor. The knee can stay bent or you can even extend that leg out on the floor. Hopefully your strap is nearby. We're gonna take the strap, wrap it around the sole of the foot, and just extend the one leg. Again, we're not gonna hold it very long, but just getting a little extra stretch. Since you don't have to reach up and grab the foot or hold on to the leg, you can hold on to the strap and even guide it just slightly deeper for that lengthening quality. Couple of breaths, don't need to overdo it. They've already had some good work. With this deep breathing, and especially since you're lying down and it's kind of relaxed, even imagine you're sending breath to that hamstring. All right, let's bend the knee. Okay, maybe pause so you can release the strap easily. Set the foot down. Let's lift the left knee, freeing up the foot so we can wrap the strap around the left foot and then extend it into the air. I'm just holding onto the strap, just looping it around the hand. Left knee, okay, whatever leg is in the air, 
Don't worry about fully extending the leg. You can keep the knee bent. Just I'm just guiding the leg okay, over my head, so to speak, as if my toes were going to the door that's behind me. And I can feel that lengthening quality through the hamstring. And it's nice because you can, you can certainly have control of how much or how less you experience with that. One more breath. And then soften, bend the knee, release the strap. Done with that. So you can set it to the side. Hug both knees into chest. And we'll finish with a twist. We'll take both knees over to the left side of the room. Extend your right arm to the right side of the room. Again, maybe three to five breaths. Make them deep breaths. Nice little twist. Again, affecting the low back and hips. Even your core. Remember all these sections of the body were certainly affected with our balancing work. When you're ready, carefully and slowly return to center. You might pause in center just for that realignment and then take knees to the other side. Knees to the right, left arm extends to the left. Three to five breaths. Notice how you're feeling here. Hopefully throughout the practice you were never really out of breath. Then we move slow enough where you can maintain that nice steadiness of breath throughout this hour-long practice. And that too is the intention. Just keeping that nice ease. Even though we're moving, you're working. But you're able to move uh, in a sense of calm. Ah. Uh, all right, when you're complete, let's come back up to center. One last hug, and then extend the legs out in front of you onto the floor, arms resting down by your side. Maybe, maybe some adjustments so you can feel comfortable lying flat on your back. But if you need some extra support, bring in a blanket or even that big pillow. That's where my bolster sometimes comes in handy. Maybe bend your knees and place that bolster underneath the bent knees. A nice soft pillow underneath your head. Be supported in this restorative, relaxing, meditative posture, Shavasana. Return to the awareness of your breath as you hold here in stillness, taking advantage of this meditative moment. Feel free to remain here as long as you like. It's very relaxing. You did your hard work. So take the time here. Even as I end the practice and come to a sitting position, you're welcome to stay right here lying down. to move before moving the body right away and too quickly start with the movement of breath just take take slow deep breaths maybe five deep breaths and with these deep breaths begin to feel movement return to your body take your time with all of this After your fifth breath, move as slowly as you can and carefully move or roll to one side of your body into this nurturing pose. You can even pause here. Using your hands in a new breath, 
Lift yourself up. Feel free to bring in something to sit on, like a pillow or blanket. As it feels comfortable, cross your legs. And then sit up as tall as you can. At the moment, you can just keep your arms relaxed down by your side, hands resting in your lap. And then one more movement together and inhale to extend the arms up into the air. As you exhale, bring your palms together and down to your heart. Taking one more breath in and out. And as we come to the close of our practice together, we bow saying Namaste. Thank you so much for watching and participating in this yoga lesson. To help us with the channel so we can continue to bring you more content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's really appreciated. Namaste.